Welcome, Douglas County. I am Ann Jones Guider. I'm District 4 Commissioner here in Douglas County, and I welcome you to District Dialogue. And although uh, I am the District 4 Commissioner, I like to have guests that uh, are interesting to all of Douglas Countyans. And this morning I have uh, Patty Wyke mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Wyke Travel. Mm -hmm. And with all the things going on about the pandemic and the shut-ins and stuff like that, I thought it was time to have an uplifting program, <laughs> things to look forward to uh, with the 2021 year. And so I've invited her here to talk about the travel industry, what uh, we can expect, uh, whether it's cruises or uh, Airbnb and whatever. Uh, so I welcome you, Patty. And um, uh, I just uh, want you to kind of go over what can we expect in the travel industry right now? Are they, oh, is it opening up? Are there cities that are better to go visit here in the United States rather than some of the others because of, uh, you know, some crime and uh, issues like that? But uh, where are some safe places for families to visit? Um, so I'm going to just turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Ann. I really appreciate it. And hi, everyone. This is Patty. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to start with actually is a bit of a history. And I'm going to use the cruise industry as an example. But on March 8th, uh, 2020, there was um, a decree that went out where it was recommended and encouraged that people not cruise. Five days later, CLIA, which is the umbrella over all of the cruise industry, shut down all of the ports. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a one year anniversary. And for the cruise lines, that means they have been out of commission within the United States for almost exactly a year. So if you can imagine the way that the travel, the hospitality industry, uh, there are so many industries I know that were hit hard, but you think of everything that's connected with that, that would be restaurants, it would be hotels, it would be all of the ones that have uh, the taking care of the supplies that come into the hotels and the restaurants. The number of people at all of the cruise ports basically um, weren't sure what was going to happen and eventually most of them were out of work. So we know that approximately at least four million, if not more, oh directly hit uh, because of what happened uh, throughout the world, obviously, with the pandemic. But one of the things I wanted to uh, give you an idea on, and I think this fits with what Ann was talking about, and I do have notes just in case I don't want to forget <laughs> something. <clears throat> but And I, I wanted to be sure that I was m stating some of the organizations correctly. One of the first, couple of the first ones that went into protection mode immediately would have been both the hotels and the airlines. Um, they still were running at a guideline capacity, so they had all of these organizations that had to jump in and immediately start figuring out what it was they were mm -hmm. going to do and how they were going to do it. One of them was the American Hotel and Lodging Association. <clears throat> and I've got papers in front. I, one of the things I want you to know is I do a lot of research. That's what we do with the travel. And obviously, it's even more now. But what they do is this was uh, something they put out that was an employee and guest health. And this was put out way back toward the beginning. Those of you that have been to hotels, and I've been to some of them, um, I really want to work on making sure we're building things locally and within the state, if at all possible. So we had a chance to go to Chateau Alain. We've been to the mm -hmm. King and Prince. Um, <clears throat> and since, they have- Since the shut- yeah, Oh, yes, shut down. yes, okay. yeah. Right, and so you. wanted to just get a feel for, you know, how are they handling things? What are they doing? So, um, and- one of the things I want to also point out is I really believe that if not the mask hopefully will be the thing that'll go away. But I really believe that all these health guidelines 
are going to stay in place because that's what consumers are going to demand and expect. We're going to want that level of safety, that level of health, because just because this goes away, we deal with flu, we deal with other things. Anyway, um, so it's things like and each, each hotel, each resort, and we've also went to Jamaica in November. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk about that in a little bit as to our experience going out of the country. <clears throat> but everything is focused with the safety of the employees and also of the guests. And uh, you'll see things like they may not be doing the free breakfast at the hotel, even though it may be you know, offered. It may be something that's packaged. When we went to um, Jamaica and we went to uh, one of the Sandals resorts, uh, the way they handled it was as the guest comes in, <clears throat> there was a server that was assigned to you and they would take you around. Things were already prepackaged individually, but the server was the one that would reach in and get that for you. So you were getting that extra piece of sense of safety. safety. Mm -hmm. So it's been amazing mm -hmm. the way that the industry has has jumped in and in order to be able to really help and make sure that things are done correctly. Um, there was, um, for instance, you get you can get something like this one was from Hilton. So one was an overall, but it's it's really important that you know exactly what the guidelines are, what it is that that hotel or that resort is doing, so that you know what you're coming in to expect. What are you expected to do as the guest? Um, so obviously, people in the plastic industry have made money. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> plastic. plastic. <laughs> oh yes. So, um, but anyway, so it's. It's just been an amazing journey, um, something difficult to go through, but it's been very challenging and it's been exciting to see the way the industry has jumped in. What about the airlines? <clears throat> okay, and that's my next and the set. health yes. requirements. Yes, right. So um, what I also brought had to do with uh, the airlines and because, of course, Delta is the one that I normally use. Mm -hmm. So we got to experience what they did. Uh, Delta way back on, this, this one happens to be from June 11th, 2020. So that's how quickly they were putting, and this was just from Delta, not from the uh, overall organization, <laughs> right. So <clears throat> they had, obviously TSA started checking, changing things. Um, some were to the positive and some were less. They would let us take more of uh, any kind of hand sanitizer. You could take a larger size, okay. not the 3.4 that they normally did. But another part of it that was interesting was, and let's see if I've got that one, is, um, oh, that they you would have to take things out of your bag. In other words, they're not touching anything. And if there were some things that, uh, you in a, it, what they did was well some things were taken out but here was something else is you were encouraged to remove the, your belts pockets the things that you normally would put in the bins they wanted those actually put in the carry-on bag bins are one of the biggest germ places yeah. everybody touches them <laughs> and everything goes in them yeah. <laughs> and so in other words, they're just, uh, it's just like your trays. Of course, those are kinds of things that the airlines now are doing more of after, after each of the flights. And they have to adjust the flights so that there's time for right. them to come in and really do the kind Clean. of cleaning that's expected. Right. So um, go ahead, Dan. Well, you mentioned that you, they wanted you to put certain items in your carry-on. Well, you're not talking about shoes, I assume but a belt or a watch and things like that. Right. But once you go through security at the airport, you can put them back oh, on. Oh yes, okay. absolutely, yeah. It's just that those are the kinds of things, you know, that we always would put in the tray. In right. the, and so they didn't want that in there. Okay. They're trying to, they're looking at where can the biggest area of, um, germs can be passed and so on. And obviously we know it's the masks. 
Delta is one that I highly recommend. <clears throat> they are still expecting the middle seat to be empty. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. That's really huge. Not all the airlines are doing that. Um, I don't remember the date. They keep extending, letting us know how much further they're going to but maintain But you do have that. to wear a mask while you're <clears throat> right. on the flight. Exactly, okay. yeah. So, and one of the other things that they did that, oh, I hope it keeps. <laughs> you know, when the plane lands, mm -hmm. everyone pops up and we're all standing all close to each other and we're right there. I mean, it's like, you know, it's the one in row 20. How quickly do they think they're going to get out by standing? <laughs> anyway, okay, just side thought. Um, I'm, I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the way they're doing it now. You are... And people are complying, which is great. You're really released row by row. Good. Because you're seated where there is protection, whether it's the seat or in your mask. Oh, well, obviously the mask's still on. Around you. And I'm thinking, wow, I really hope that continues. Yeah. Because it makes for a more comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lady's trying to pull her suitcase down and she's got, 20 people behind her that can hardly wait to get out, yes. in other words. so. But those are some of the things with the airlines. <clears throat> TSA has different procedures. Uh, I'll go ahead and say this. It was something I was going to add a little bit later on. Because of lines and so on at the <clears throat> airport, I highly recommend that you invest in getting your TSA or clearance. 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 <clears throat> If you're doing some going out of the country, which we knew we would be and we're going to be doing more this year, we went ahead and got the global entry. And that is amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> we got to watch it in, in actually in person one time. And I honestly, it seemed like every plane from out of the country, and this was at least a couple years ago, must have flown in at the same time. I mean, I don't know how they planned that, but they did. And the line, it took us two hours at least to oh get through to actually go in through customs. So I watched this person pop up to this guy at this one little place and he opened the thing for him, global entry. <clears throat> the way that global entry is set up is they have kiosks. As you come in off of the plane, there are kiosks and you go and it does a facial recognition. You get a little receipt. You hand the receipt to the guy and you go directly to the one place where they're doing customs for global entry. Now this is not the same as that clear where you look in with your eye at the airport. And I know that's something, I'm not familiar enough with that. I know it's something they've been trying at some of the different airports. Okay. That really does expedite, but it doesn't take you over to this aisle. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> it's one of the things that, um, that I do recommend for my clients. So how do you get that? That's something where you check with your travel agent. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she will be more than happy right. to give you. But yeah, there are, gov there are government sites to do that. So depending on how quickly you want to uh, get that form, you can wait and actually do it where uh, there is a minimal cost of 100 for the, at least that's what it was, for global entry. I think it was 80 or 85 for TSA. And once you have global entry, you're also TSA. So you literally but, have both. But you can go in any country with this. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the global entry is really for, global entry isn't being used in international airports. It's only coming back into the United States. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's basically, I have a global entry because I'm coming in out of the country. So it does, it's not something that's done, and a lot of the airports don't bother with TSA lines either, internationally. So that's another area. But again, those are all kinds of things that uh, I make sure I have that information for my clients. We went ahead and paid a little bit more for it so that we could get it expedited more quickly. Next big area is cruise lines. Yes. When will they open up? And that's, what? well, actually, Do what we I know? had, and I'm, <laughs> let me make sure I've got it, because I just got something from, I've, I've, been in, I've had information coming in from Royal Caribbean and from Princess, which are two of the ones that I do quite a bit. Um, 
princess is now, as of November 17th was the earliest date that I saw, but they're actually doing uh, cruises out of Fort Lauderdale. That was the only port that mm -hmm. they showed that they were doing, and it was three to seven night cruises. And I think that's what we're gonna see. There are obviously international ones that have been going on with the big cruise lines for a while. So it's not like the cruise lines didn't have any income, it just wasn't within the states. <clears throat> so the, but for those that want to sail internationally, in fact, it was really neat. There was a, I don't remember which newsletter it was that came across, and I don't remember even which cruise line, MSN, Princess, somebody. Anyway, they had a world cruise, and those tend to run 180 days. Oh, gosh, or, I mean, yes. it's, <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> That's a lot of sold, sailing. <laughs> sold out really? within hours. Goodness. Within hours, it's sold out. But the cruises are leaving from Europe and from the Mediterranean and so on. So for those people that are interested in that, um, and another one would be where the, the ship is leaving a port and is transitioning to another port, that one is a really good one to look at because of the price. And the price is lower, you're on the ship for more days. Price is lower because you're not stopping as many ports. ports. And of course the cost is less because they're not paying port charges. Port. Yeah. Okay. So you're on the ship the majority of the time. Uh, but those are transitional ones and that's because the ship is moving. And it can be moving from the states then to a place and, and, and stay in, in Europe. And you get off in Europe and then you decide what you wanna do while you're there and then come back. I've, I've done that before with a client. Um, Royal Caribbean, like I said, and there was one, and I didn't write it down, I'm sorry I didn't, is, and of course we're kinda of getting into, okay, what's happening with vaccines with a lot of these. The cruise industry is, not real sure what to do, but it was interesting because one of the cruise lines, I'm sorry I didn't write down which one it was, was having a vaccine only yeah. cruise. So that might be a way for them to see and kind of feel it out. What's the difference between being tested? Um, and that's one of the things I'm finding out before when we went to Jamaica, there was a 10 day period. Within 10 days, you were to get your negative, make sure that you had that result. They've now, in fact, it'll be the middle of this month in March, they're cutting it down to three, within three days. And that's more, I think, more <laughs> of what we're seeing. Um, uh, my daughter just went to Honduras and that's what they were saying, is that it, it was just the three days prior. So, um, and keep in mind that the health center, um, of course I know there are a lot of other places they've set up now, but the health center, center is doing, and this wasn't the vaccine, this was just get the test. Uh, but the health center is for free, so that's what Stan and I did when we went to Jamaica. We used the, the one with the health center. So do you <laughs> think any of the airlines are gonna require the vaccines? And they're looking, they're, all There's of, a lot of people yeah, that are, I know. Uh, do not want to have the right. max, yeah. vaccine. Right, yeah, so. I mean, you just see the little bit of papers that, if you can, I don't know if you can, that, that I'm holding and that <laughs> I have in front of me. Um, this thing changes. Yeah. And, and that was one of the things to point out as, I don't know how much time, if some of you have lots of time to do all that kind of research, otherwise, that's what a travel agent's for. I mean, it really is. My job is to make sure that my clients are safe, that they feel comfortable about where they're going. Um, one of the things Stan and I did when we went to Jamaica, I've used Club Mobay before, um, and that's a, you, you pay extra for that, but it's, we did that when we were leaving the island rather than coming in. Um, because it's, you pay us, it was 30 a person. Um, for just the departure. So it, we would come in and you have a place to sit, you're relaxing, you watch the schedule when you need to get to your, uh, your gate. 
um, but that's food, that's part of what's offered. Uh, they have waiters coming around, they tell you what it is, you find out what it is you want to order. Uh, great for families because there's a play area for children. Um, but we wanted to see what it was like coming in. And I wanted to do that because now the guidelines are different. Coming You're, in. Coming into back. Jamaica. Into oh, Jamaica. Okay. I wanted to see what the arrival part of Club Mo Bay was. Thank you for clearing that up so I'm not confusing. Um, and it was great. To me, it was worth it because we had one person from Club Mo Bay assigned to us. She'd let us know everything that was going to happen because there was another stop where you had to get your temperature. Uh, she made sure that we were taken where we needed to. The line goes faster because you're the ones that are paying extra, obviously. And then they take you down into a waiting area where you have an interview where they're asking questions, you present your paperwork and so on before that you before you actually can go ahead to, in our case, you can either wait, if you have Club Mobay, you can wait there for your driver to come. If you've got a hotel that has service. Do they, our, will they still have the shuttle buses where everybody crowds into? They're really <laughs> watching that. Okay. Um, when we did it, of course we were going to Sandals, so we were actually ended up the only two on. My uh, business development manager said she just they just went back to to Jamaica a few weeks ago, and they had those vans coming in, so they're they're watching how many they put in. Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course you can always get something private. There's I've had some clients that just was like, you know, I really am not going to get on. <laughs> A a in a vehicle <laughs> with a lot of people um, and so she, in her case she wanted to pay the extra and just have the private so there are just there are a lot of things that can be done that way but I did want to and I don't know how close we are with time We're fine. <clears throat> but I felt like this was really important especially when people were thinking of the of the cruise ships mm -hmm. but it's also with the airplane the the airlines have an amazing air system that keeps, we tend to think we're just breathing, breathing our own same. air, uh -huh. <laughs> which, uh, by the way, be aware that if, I've seen people that are driving in with their, in cars and still have their mask on, <laughs> and I, I that, but please don't, you're breathing your own air, that is, that's not good, okay? <laughs> uh, but anyway, I just got this, the end of February, from Royal Caribbean, and it's a little bit technical, but I, so I didn't want to explain it myself because I don't want to say anything that's wrong. Um, <clears throat> but the cruise industry is using a, a group that's called Healthy Sail, S-A-I-L, panel. But they combined with the Nebraska Medical Center and the National Strategic Research Institute and what they are, they're experts in medical practice and research, public health, infectious diseases, biosecurity, hospitality, and maritime, maritime operations. So what Royal Caribbean had them do was to come in, they wanted to see how their HVAC system was working. Was there something they needed to do mm -hmm. that would make it better? So what they did is that they had the team come in from the Medical Center and the National Strategic Research Institute and they're specialists in bioaerosols and that's the study of airborne particles. <clears throat> so because we know if I can breathe in on the mask I can breathe out on the mask I mean you know unless it's something that is clinical yeah. yes okay. Yeah. Uh, but they wanted a study, um, let's see, oh, and they had recently worked with the U.S. Department of Defense on the study of airflow on airplanes. Mm -hmm. So they had already been doing this work. So they asked them to come in, and this was way back in July of 2020, they were getting this checked. This isn't something just recent. So they had them come in, and what they did was, and I'll watch, I don't want the papers to rattle, but... They wanted them to look at the HVAC system and they did make a recommendation and it was, it had to do, they wanted layers of safety and to further minimize the possibility of spread. They recommended that they adjust the shipboard settings 
to allow for maximum air changes per hour and to upgrade their filters through the system. Mm -hmm. Now, the medical facility already had this. Well, that makes sense. You'd need the highest grade of, of air filtration, filtration. Yeah. that you need, you know, in a, on, on the ship in the, you know, medical area. And it, and it kind of made me think, oh, wonder if our doctor's offices have something like that. Anyway, <laughs> just a thought. <clears throat> uh, but they are um, HEPA filters. So those have all been added to the ships as of July 2020. So what I wanted you to understand and to see is the travel industry is losing big money but they are so committed, they've been putting out big money. Mm -hmm. To make uh, it safe for everyone. Yes, and that's something, it was interesting, mm -hmm. I, uh, I didn't bring one of those articles, but all of our rail systems, Amtrak and, and some of the other ones, and that's another option to consider also as far as travel. But they are, they really started investing and they are following the guidelines and they're working on mm -hmm. all of these. Mm -hmm. So th the industry is really ready. They're ready for people to come. They're ready for people to get out and uh, we all are at a point where that's the way we're oh, feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and you're feeling yeah. that way? Yes, because <laughs> you've done a lot of traveling, I know. Um, <clears throat> And I'm trying to think, let me see if there, uh, go ahead. I was going to ask you what kind of uh, traveling are you booking right now? What, uh, what's the most popular well, type of travel? I, I'm still doing some international. Uh, the majority are, they'll look at international and they'll think yes, and then they're like, oh, I'm not sure I want to get caught, and I don't know what changes will happen. So really, it's, it's within the United States. Okay. Um, what are some popular cities to visit well, here in the and U.S.? Just stop and think how beautiful it would be to be in one of the national parks mm -hmm. with all that. I, personally, I want to go to South Dakota. And that's actually, I just had a family <laughs> that went to South Dakota. We, we set up a, they, they did some of the parks, the national parks in South Dakota, went over into North Dakota. Uh -huh. So I actually had put together a trip for them. I um, also want to go to the Ark. Yes. My husband and I had planned to go last year when the pandemic hit. We already had booked everything, so we had to cancel. But Yes. Our family went a year ago. We spent really spent the day more in the museum area, and we mm -hmm. didn't get to go, so we still need to go into the Ark. Uh -huh. um, but there, for people that are wanting that that island feel. Remember, we've got a lot of islands we're not that far away from that are still in the United States. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you don't have any of the guidelines as far as having to do the three days prior to coming back into the States in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Puerto Rico is considered domestic. Well, <laughs> I, I've been to Puerto Rico before, but it was uh, uh, via ship, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, since then, they've had the hurricanes and everything. So, are they ready for they're ready? People yeah, to come I back mean, in? yes, yeah. It I was mean, a beautiful island. Yes, yes. and uh -huh. it is. It's a beautiful country. But so, but there are things like I've had two. One of mine was my granddaughter. I've got another one coming up that uh, honeymoon couples, um, and they're wanting to definitely go get to go somewhere. Weddings are still happening. What about the beach? Yes, the and Florida beaches. Oh yes, and, and Marco Island is yeah. where my granddaughter just came back from. Got another one going there. We went there. to Marco Island <coughs> about two years ago. We have drove a, down there. Yeah, have not been there, but just think of the different islands. We've got Amelia, but we've got ones in Georgia. You know, Saint Simon. Simons. We've got Jekyll Island. Mm -hmm. There, there are so many beautiful areas that we can actually. And if someone wants to get into the Key West and into that, you know, mm -hmm. that area down in there, Delta flies directly to there. And of course, so. you have all the Florida coast too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you know, some are saying, "Well, I don't want Florida." Well, the islands really will give you a, that island feel. Yeah. I know it's not the Bahamas and someplace else, but that may be where you're more comfortable. Yeah. And yeah. that's really what it's about. 
So uh, <coughs> tell some of the advantages of using a travel agency rather than just booking it yourself. Oh, well, let's see. This could be part <laughs> of it right here. <laughs> Um, to warn us and have us prepared well, to go through and also to take care of things that happened because things can happen and if you've done gone through and just did an online with whatever's the least expensive or whatever that doesn't mean that they have a contact with directly with the resort or the hotel or the country that's one of the things I also recommend that there is what's called step program and that's free to sign up for and that's a government agency that connects the United States with the consulates in other countries oh. and this way the, the other countries the consulate you send them where you're coming to and when you're coming in so you now have a direct contact a lot of the suppliers that I use actually have people on the ground in some of those areas so um, there are a couple examples. I had um, one couple flew into London, been flying all night, get there, and they said, oh, your hotel room was canceled. They knew it hadn't been because we mm -hmm. hadn't that long before finished yeah. the final payment. They had the receipt. She had the receipt, all the paperwork, sorry. So what they did is they made them use their credit card. They upgraded them but they still made them use their credit card to hold that other room. Mm. <clears throat> she calls in a panic. <laughs> so I immediately call. We find, we get everything taken care of, and after their nap, everything was cleared <laughs> up, and it was on their end. They had yeah, done that. Of course. Um, and, but I've had several other things where, if it hadn't been for the connection Everything with we're talking about, agency. yes. Everything we're talking about, though, has to do with relationships. It has to do with building that. It has to do with building trust. It has to do with building the confidence that you've got somebody that's, you know, I mean, Mama Bear can come out right here when it comes to <laughs> somebody not doing something right for my for my clients, um, <laughs> because you've been you're on this journey together, uh, and there I I mean the number of questions that can come across and everything. The way I run my business, my commission comes from my suppliers. My clients are not paying me any extra money. If they went in and did all this work themselves, they would pay the exact same price, whether you're doing it with Disney or Sandals is one that will not allow any other company to cut the price down. Let me, <clears throat> speaking of prices, uh, because of all the uh, special things that the resorts and airlines, everybody's having to uh, make, um, have the prices gone up uh, quite a bit or just a I smidge? think the one area that you'll see that happening more is with the airlines. Well, now fuel is going yes. up. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but as far as the deals and the packages that are coming across, one of the things the cruise lines are doing is they're making sure that you have the extra things that you would never ordinarily pay for. Mm -hmm. It's like here, you get them all. We'll let you have all of these if you book by March 31st and then usually you see it come up again. Now, did you say that the uh, cruise lines are not really opening up until October? November, November, that's the first one. I haven't gone in and looked at Carnival because okay. I have a lot of people that like Carnival. But we can book. Oh, now. the booking, glad you brought that up. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to 2020. All of a sudden, people are losing all of their bookings. They're being canceled. Mm -hmm. So what most of the travel agents did, if at all possible, and that's what the companies did, whether it was a resort or whatever, is they would give you extra points or whatever, or a voucher, and let you go ahead and move it over. So what's happening is 2021 is filling up, has already been filling up from the cancellations from 2020. They're all oh, rolling over. Okay. Okay, that doesn't mean you can't find what you want, but it does mean that's what what's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, all the beginning 2021, we had 
we had our um, supposed to be our anniversary plus Stan and I both turned 75 this year Woo! Um, <laughs> um, but we were going to do an Alaska land cruise. Oh, I've done that. And oh, that's that's been on our bucket list. I did list. sea and land. Yes, yeah. we, that's exactly what ours is supposed yeah. was supposed to be. Well, Canada shut the ports. That means Ooh. you couldn't come into Vancouver. Vancouver, that's where plus we the cruise left. lines really weren't. Ours was supposed to be coming up in May. Um, so, what I'm saying is that. If someone's interested, and they're opening up 2022, so or toward the end of 2021, but as I just said, Princess was opening up November 17th out of Fort Lauderdale. They have an entire schedule that's set up Princess for... Princess is one of the premium yes, cruise yes. lines, I can and say. And most of the Princess cruise lines now, the ships have all been changed to the medallion class. Which that's another that's another interview, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite cruises was through the Panama Canal, and it was a two-week um, awesome trip, and it we just it was awesome. Like yeah. you say, it was just awesome. But we've had some very good cruises. But we did a Mediterranean one time where we went to Italy and Greece and mm -hmm. Turkey, and and I'm so glad uh, that we oh. were able to do that. Um, so. Um, Ah. Patty, are there any more? Oh yes, I've got fun facts. I, yeah, I've, got I've got those. I've got those. Okay, I'm going to focus <clears throat> on the fun capital of the world, which is Walt Disney World. <laughs> and um, their their 50th anniversary is 2023. So as of fall of this year, they're going to start celebrating to the buildup. Okay. So there are, and there are some amazing packages. They're slowly opening their uh, on-property resorts. They were doing that a little at a time. Uh, still can't get, at least when I went in the last time, you're not getting dinner packages and the meal packages and so on. So they're, they're adjusting. Um, but a part of the culmination in 2023 is there's a rail line that goes from Miami and comes right along the coast and actually comes like around where the airports are and it's a bright line railroad from Miami. Well, what they're doing now is they're getting ready to build an extension Tampa. to go into, <laughs> yeah, they're going ta and they're coming into or Orlando to the airport there will be from the Orlando Airport a connection directly to, to Disney, Disney Springs. All right. So that's going to be 2023, <clears throat> and uh, the price is just minimal. It's less than what you'd pay for a taxi. I mean, it was just based on what they're supposing, based on their other prizes, <clears throat> uh, prices. Sorry, but they are now building, getting ready to build and start a brand new hotel. And it is the Star Wars Galactic <laughs> Star Cruiser. Oh. And the <laughs> pictures, you are literally as if you are on the ship. Oh my goodness. And it's going to be <laughs> very um, in, in, immersive. You're going to have immersive experiences on there. So whenever it is, and they... <clears throat> Anytime there's something new opening up, resort out of the country, whatever else it is, they're always going to be doing specials for you to pre-book before the opening. Mm. <clears throat> that can be good, <clears throat> sorry, and it can be challenging. Uh, because, because if it's a brand new hotel or resort, there may be some bugs that haven't been taken care of. So you need to understand that, you know, when you're doing that kind of booking. But Lots of resorts being built, new ships being built. There are new cruise ships mm -hmm. coming out. Um, the industry's ready. Yes. Um, what about Airbnb? Do you do? <coughs> <coughs> they don't work with us. <coughs> no, that, that's really, that's something that is done. It's another whole organization. Now, I do have access to some of the VRBOs, okay. which is, <laughs> and a lots of I can we do condos we can do and there are a lot of them that really no longer want to be bothered with it they just assume a travel agent go ahead you know and those are that's vacation rental by owner 
Um, so have access to that. Definitely condos, villas. Mm -hmm. um, you Be know, I can beach do, houses. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You do yacht cruises. Um, I mean, well, this has been very interesting, very enlightening, and very uh, hopeful looking. Good, good. <laughs> Hope so. You were wondering if that's it. what I'd be able to do, um, <clears throat> and if it's okay, uh, you can contact me at Patty P A T T Y at wanktravel.com, and that's W E N C K travel.com. If you're not comfortable and familiar with me, do the Googling. We're part of the Chamber. We're diplomats, very active in the community. Very We've been active. here 17 and a half years. I'm on a lot of boards in the community, uh, part of Partners in Education. So former educator. <clears throat> um, and so this community is our home. This is where we're staying. And um, don't hesitate to give me a call, 770-852. 1925 and um, be happy to answer any questions. One last thing, please do some of the traveling local. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you've ever if, if you've ever wanted to do something to help Douglas County, have a staycation. That has nothing to do with me or money on my part or anything. Just think how nice it'd be just to get away to a hotel. One of our hotels, we've got beautiful hotels right here in Douglas County. <clears throat> and can get a package put together where you have dinner and you're just away from your house. Mm. So our parks, Serenby is a great place to go to, mm -hmm. um, Manning, uh, Banning Mills, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a lot right in this area, some amazing, amazing parks and places to go. So please support our local economy. Our local people need it. Restaurants, mm -hmm. the industry needs it. We, our community needs it. All right, that's Thank a you, great Anna. plug for Douglas County. Well, by that's the way. what <laughs> that's what I'm about. I is know Douglas it. County. <laughs> well, thank you so much, My Patty. I, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I look forward to contacting you uh, in the near future. There, uh, there's a place in Europe I want to go. I want to do a cruise down the coast where Corfu. Yes, yes I want to do that uh, cruise. We did not go to Venice when we were over there. And that's the one city I'd like to uh, visit too. I can take care of it. <laughs> I know. And you I've can. done one and for Anne have. before and her family. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, my pleasure. Any way that I can help, any questions of any kind that has to do with travel, please don't hesitate to let me know. All right. Thank, well, thank you, you. Thank you again. Thank you, Douglas County, for tuning in to District Dialogue. I hope you have gotten some insightful information and that you're putting on your travel clothes and planning on a, a future trip. So thank you again. Good day.